welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kichanu Bemitzvotav Betzivanu Laasok Bedivrei Torah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and welcome, welcome. And uh, again, I want to encourage uh, those people who may be watching this as a recording to please feel free to come to post comments and whatever. I enjoy seeing what you have to say. Uh, so let's go into the text now. And yesterday, one second, it's loading. There we go. Should be able to see it now. Um, we had talked about the Kohen being in a state of impurity and being forbidden to eat any kind of sacrificial food. And we mentioned an exception, which was Truma. Truma. We defined Truma yesterday, so I won't redefine it, but to know that it is a very low level of sanctity to it. Just as there are degrees of impurity, there are also degrees of sanctity. And I said yesterday that we would take a look at this particular verse. It's verse 7, um, which is an example, I would say, of oral Torah in the written Torah. There are a number of examples of oral Torah because the basis of oral Torah is circumstances alter cases. In other words, the Torah basically gives outlines the, the essential rules, and then in trying to bring those rules down from heaven into the real world, we wind up with circumstances that, that affect the application of those rules, and to do it in a way, to be able to apply those rules in a way that still is maintaining the rules. So this particular example we're going to see um, is an exception when it comes to Truma. And uh, the we're going to take a look today at Torah Tmima, and here we have it. So this, this verse is one of the very first verses to discuss, be discussed in the Talmud and in the Mishnah. And you notice here Brachot, that's the name of the tractate. Uh, Brachot, it's the very first tractate of the Mishnah and consequently of the Talmud. And Bet is the first page, and this is the side of the page. They're folio pages. So 2A and 2B are the, the two sides of the page. No Gemara page starts on page one, and there are those who say that, there, that there's a reason for it, which is uh, that only God is one. And perhaps it's also saying that... Um, we only understand perhaps stage two and not the actual essence. There's some who say it's a much more pragmatic reason, and that is the cover of the book was page one. And you didn't want to print stuff on it, uh, partially because of the holiness of it. You didn't want to put it on the on uh, upside down or on the uh, directly on the table, etc. possibly, although that, that is not necessarily disrespectful. Uh, but certainly it was more likely to get wear and tear and the print to come off of it, etc. So you can give it a pragmatic reason or you can give it a spiritual reason or you can say both. At any rate, back into our topic, Uva Hashemesh Betayer. The sun sets and he is uh, he is in a pure state. Tanya, there is a early uh, a source prior to the year 200, that is not actually in the Mishnah. This is being cited in the Gemara. The Gemara very often will cite something that's called a baraita. The word baraita is an Aramaic word which means outside, outside. And um, that is because when the oral Torah, when Rabbi Yehud HaNasi, uh, the head of the community at the time, uh, in in, in at that point, it was under Roman occupation, and the Romans called it Palestine uh, intentionally, uh, that they did not want to call it Judea or Israel. Uh, at any rate, there was still a Jewish community there, and the head of that community decided that he needed to put in writing the oral Torah because he was concerned that it would be forgotten. And the the sources that he put into the Mishnah uh 
he selected what sources to put in, but there were also many, many sources that he chose not to put in, and they're known as baraitas. And there are some collections of baraitot, and the Gemara, as I said, quotes a good number of these baraitas, some of which are not in separate editions. So an example of baraitot would be something called the tosefta, the tosefta. So baraita, because it's outside the Mishnah, it wasn't included in the Mishnah. So what does this baraita say? Uva Hashemish Vatahir. So they're quoting the 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 source, the Torah, and the explanation is Biat Biat Shimsho Ma'akvato Me'elechol Bitruma. When it comes to the setting of the sun, right? It that is what prevents him. In other words, until the sun sets, he is prevented from eating in the Truma, in the Truma. The En Kaparato, but the need to bring a, um, a an offering, a sacrifice, ma'akvato prevents him from eating the truma. So again, that of course is crying out for explanation. And here we are, we're going to take a look at the explanation that the Torah Tamima is going to give us. So he's saying, Ritsono Gomar. What does this mean? What he means to say. Imhu me'ela hatmeim, shemechusarim kapara. If this priest happens to be in a state of impurity, one of those people in a state of impurity that require a an a, atonement offering, hainu. That is to say, shetzrichim lahavi korban letaratam. That they are need to bring an offering in order to complete their purification. And it's so lovely that um, Torah Tmima tells us what kind of impurity are we talking about. Zav, remember that was a flow, the Zava, that is a flow of semen that is basically uh, continuous. The Zava, a woman who is seeing blood past her menstrual cycle. The Yoledet, a woman in childbirth, remember, she also ultimately brings some birds as an offering at the end, Umitsora, and a, a, a person who has Mitsora, translated, of course, as leprosy, these kinds of impurities. So even though they may be one of these people who are in this situation where they still need to bring an offering in order to complete their process of purification. Mutarim bechozot. Nevertheless, nevertheless, they are permitted lechol bitruma. They are permitted to eat the truma. Achar ha'arev shemesh after nightfall. So very often you have you go. So they would go to the mikvah. They would go to the immersion pool. And they would immerse themselves and then wait until nightfall and then be able to eat this sanctified food, truma. They did not have to wait to complete their purification process until the next day when they would have brought their offering. The ein lahamtim, and they do not require to wait ad lamachar baboker until the next day in the morning achar ha'avat akorban until they have brought their offering, their sacrifice. The korban ma'akev, but the need to bring the sacrifice prevents rak alichat achilat, it only prevents the consumption, the eating of kodshim velotruma. In other words, the other sanctified animals, such as a chatat or, or a shlamim or things like that, where a priest got part of that to eat, and he would not be allowed to eat it until he had brought, if he was a Zav or a Yoledit or whatever, one of those situations, somebody in his family was that, and they were also to eat this, okay, they were able to eat this, um, they would not be able to do it until they had brought their kapara. The Iyen Bedosha Haba'ah, he says, check out the next interpretation, 
Veshiur Ha'arev Shemesh, and as to the evening, right, the 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 evening of the sun, or the sunset, who kesheyotz im shlosha kochavim beinoni. This is something that then you're familiar with. That is set as the time when three medium-sized stars are visible when they come out. Vezehu eight, and the approximate time of this is kamor shlisha'a, a third of an hour, a kharshkiyata kama, after the sun sets. In other words, there's, there are various interpretations or opinions as to exactly when this is, but um, Torah Tamima is saying we're talking about 20 minutes after sunset. And he says, and he says, check out Orechayim, that is in the Shulchan Aruch. Um, and it's, of course, a um, collection and uh, of, of halacha, of Jewish law. And he gives you the exact uh, citation, Siman Reish Lamed Hay, that's 235. And we could go ahead and look that up and see what he has to say about, I imagine it's defining the exact time, how do you define the precise time of nightfall? So that's that one. And we're going to go on to the next, as you can see here is a, the next discussion he has here. My Uva Hashemesh So the Gemara is asking, this is the same place, this is an Ibid, right? But on the next page, Right, the exact understanding of this phrase it's ambiguous, and so the Gemara is questioning what exactly is the meaning. How do we understand Uva Hashemesh? Literally, it means the sun comes v'taher and he is purified. Right, Uva Hashemesh. So, what is Uva Hashemesh? The sun comes. He says, biat Hashemesh, meaning the sun coming to rest. In other words, sunset. So it means sunset, v'taher, and he is pure, or it is pure, and he says, taher yoma, and the day is pure of any light. In other words, there's no mixture anymore. In other words, nightfall. That is the halachic understanding of this phrase. So in other words, this doesn't mean he is pure. It means, and the sun comes and it is pure. And, it, and the day is cleaned out of any light. Just like sometimes in English, you'll say, you can ask somebody, do they have any money? And if they say, I'm clean, it means I'm cleaned out of money, right? And this is the same idea that Tahir. But the Gemara is rigorous, and it says, Vedilma, but perhaps, Uva Hashemesh Biat Oro. Maybe it means the sun comes, its light comes, right? In other words, the next morning, maybe it really means morning, Vetaher, and he is purified. Taher Gavra, we're talking about the person being pure. And that's a possibility. Amar Rabba Bar Rab Shila, and we have a, a rabbi, specific rabbi by the name of Rabba Bar Rab Shila, said, Imkain, if that were the case, Le Makra, the scriptural verse should have said, Vayitar, and he will become purified. He will become purified. And that would mean the person. But the fact that it says v'tahir refers to the light of the sun. And that's, of course, the shemesh v'tahir. And shemesh, of course, is the noun closest to the verb v'tahir or the, or the adjective or the ad, yeah. So here we go. This is this right here. So it says nismach. Uh, in other words, this commentary is dependent al hadrasha hakodemet on the previous uh, explanation or the previous interpretation. The tame shehu mechusar kipurim. He's just going over the basic halacha, right? That a person who is impure, who who is still um, lacking in bringing his kipurim, his atonement offering, sacrifice, mutar lechol betruma. 
meet Yad Achar Harev Shemesh, that he, even though he is not completely pure, he is allowed to eat Truma immediately after nightfall. The Ein Sarich Lahamtin, and he does not need to wait Ad Lamachar Baboker until the next morning, Achar Havat Akoban, until he, after he has brought his sacrifice. And in this particular drasha, he explains how this, you know, how the 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 hechrech means sort of the uh, force of this particular law. Meaning, I believe he's saying uh, that that it's to be understood compellingly that this is what it means. The im the the alkain or im let's see yeah the alkain ha perush uva hashemesh that he says because in fact right the interpretation uva hashemesh that understanding by the sun coming this phrase the sun comes means be at hashemesh means sunset in other words the sun coming home so to speak the end of the day. Vetaher tahor yoma, and that the vetaher refers to the day, the idea of the daylight being cleaned out, purified of daylight. Ritzonolo mar, and again, um, Baruch Halevi Epstein is explaining exactly what we're we talking about because the language here is also a little bit different. Sheba'avur hayom, right? That in the when the day passes, nesa tahor mimela. It it is of course automatically right. It's it automatically becomes cleaned out, purified of light. The ein sarich od peula letaro, and he does not any doesn't require any further um, further activity for its for his i believe it's for his um purification i believe unless here he's still talking about uh the day itself that there's nothing else that needs to happen and i think i'm happier with this second interpretation that he doesn't that the day doesn't require any further activity in order to be uh, cleaned of any light and i think that's what he's talking about the habet, and he mentions parenthetically that the bet hashimush, that is the bet that appears in this uh, per, um, this prefix that is used, the bet b something, which means with bet hashimush means, I believe he means the bet that means with ragil liot chaser that often it is left out af b'mikra even in scripture. And here he gives some example. All right. Uh, okay, let's see where he, how he's going to apply, apply it anyway. But here is his example. Vayechalek alehem laila, and he uh, alighted upon them at night. Bimkom balayla, and normally it would say at night. In other words, he, he, uh, Divided, he he divided his troops upon them, uh, or he actually uh, split up his group upon them at night. And it normally you'd say balayla at night. Another example: Hayesh bayit beit avicha. Is there uh, in your father's home makom lalun? Okay, um, place in a, in which to spend the night. And it says hayesh beit avicha instead of beit avicha. Is there in your father's home, right? The makom bevet avicha. So this bait at the beginning, which can mean in or with or at, it is it's sometimes omitted, elided. Another example: Boker the yada hashemesh, morning, and uh, you will know the Lord. Something like that. The Lord will appear. The makom baboker instead of says baboker in the morning, it just says morning. The Lord will appear, something like that, or you will know the Lord, um, and it doesn't say in the morning. The harbe kahena, and there's so many like this. Rabu milispor, more than I could count. The lo uva hashemesh biat oro v'taher, and it doesn't say uva hashemesh 
biat oru v'taher, okay? Uh, and it doesn't say, uh, and the sun comes, biat oru v'taher. So it says, tahor gavra. It, it means that it, does, it doesn't mean he, the man, is becomes purified. So I'm trying to understand exactly where he's coming. Okay, but he's saying this phrase doesn't mean that the man is purified. So I'm trying to think of where uh, where it would be. Uh, okay, maybe beviat uh, oro. Hmm. Maybe the bet would come there. And what this is saying is, Shia'ur uh, Hashemesh Bayom Hashmini. In other words, if the person is to be purified, and and that what it means, it doesn't mean this that 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 the sun should come up, right? Should should become light, Bayom Hashmini on the eighth day, Zman Hatara. That is to say, the day of this person's complete purification, lazav, zava, beyomedet, mitzorah, for a person who's a zav, or a woman who's a zava, or one who, a woman who's just given birth, umitzorah, and someone who's a leper. Vyase od pu'ula letaro, and he needs to do another activity, in other words, bringing the sacrifice, in order for him to be purified. Vahaino sheyit har atzmo. In other words, what it's saying is that he should purify himself. Vahavarat korbanotav in bringing his offering. Why? Why does it not mean that? Nishum de imkain. Because if that were the case, hava le lemar. It should have stated vayit har. It should have used the a different form of this word v'taher and say vayit har, and he will become purified v'lo v'taher, v'taher. Upiresh Rashi, and Rashi goes on, uh, Torah Tmima goes on to say, and Rashi at this point explains d'hava le'le mar, that it would have had to say vayit har, and he shall become purified, shuhula shon sivui, which it would have been a command. In other words, vayitar means, and he, the way Rashi's understanding it is, and he should purify himself. Vitahir means it is purified. Uh, I, th I think that he's saying, veludvarav, dvarav, and were, had he not stated, had Rashi not stated that, Explicitly, yesh lomar, one might have suggested, hakavana, right, that the intention of this explanation is to have um, the vayithar of, of that, it should have said vayithar, shehu lashon atid, vayithar, for those of you who know Hebrew grammar, know that that is a future tense, he will be pure. Of, so in, in other words, as opposed to an imperative, the, the way Rashi's explaining it. Aval v'taher, but it says v'taher, and he is pure, mashma, or it is pure. In other words, the day is pure. Mashma, it implies, shekevan she'avar zman hanigbal, right? That since the um, the defined uh, time has passed by Nesa Mimela Tahor. So this is still, it's interesting that it is automatically purified. And again, we have to go and say that we're talking about the light because Tahir, it's saying it's not Tahir Gavra. It's not that the person is, uh, is um, purified, but that Tahir Yoma, but that the day is purified. And I'm going to stop here uh, and stop the share. And uh, I welcome any comments that you might have on this. And I know it was pretty, uh, you know, intense. So any thoughts, any questions before I stop the uh, recording? Okay. Was this a case of confuse and conquer? I hope not. Not really. Okay. Uh, it's It's a case of explaining when the day starts and if they just went with that it would have been
pretty much less arguing, I guess. Yes, it's true, because this is a situation where under normal circumstances, one would not be the, you know, we've just gone through this law that's saying in very explicit terms that a priest who's in a state of impurity is forbidden to eat anything holy, anything sanctified. And truma is sanctified. Right. But it's not like he's like they're fasting, though. They're allowed to eat, just right. not, right. not, not the, the sanctified stuff. Sure. Sure. You know, <laughs> it's like because right. that's not what they only eat. Right. Truma wasn't put on the altar. OK, whereas right. anything that would have been essentially put on the altar, he is not allowed to eat. There are some other sanctified foods that are not put on the altar. I mentioned them like first fruits, right? Mm -hmm. And also, so bechorot, or firstborn animals, or uh, and other you know, similar kinds of things, you know, ma'asar, and, and tithing, some tithes that went to yeah. the priests. Uh, and whether they also uh, apply to this particular particular law, it doesn't say it explicitly. So we were speculating about that yesterday. And with this, no, but it's nice to watch the uh, arguments and 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 to see the the way people are thinking. You know, it's like, ooh, let's just take it down a little bit more. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's exactly why I'm doing it in the hopes mm -hmm. that you'll enjoy seeing this happening. I'm going to stop the recording.